As you are probably aware, there is a huge hype at the moment about ChatGPT, which was launched late last year and grew to 1 million users within a week. If the hype is to be believed, then it's game over for programmers everywhere, as ChatGPT will soon be writing all the code. But don't worry, if it replaces your job, you can simply use it to become a millionaire. Of course, everyone isn't convinced by the hype surrounding this new AI. So what is true? Can ChatGPT help you write VBA code faster and better, or is it just another overhyped technology that we'll never hear about again? Let's take a look and find out. ChatGPT is a chat box created by the company OpenAI. It provides detailed responses and articulate answers that in theory sound like they are generated by a human. It can be used to generate code in many languages, including VBA. But how good is this code, and can we actually use it in real life? Let's start by asking ChatGPT to retrieve unique values from a range and we'll see how it performs. When we ask ChatGPT to do this, it gives us a reply in conversational format and provides the code that we need for the function. As well as the function, it gives us some sample code which is very helpful in showing us how to use the function. Let's go ahead and run the code and you can see that we've got an error. This is caused because ChatGPT omitted a variable declaration. We can fix this quickly and run the code again. And as we can see, it successfully printed out the unique values in our range to the immediate window. This is quite impressive and it is a great example of chat GPT helping us write VBA code. Two small changes I would make to this code is to specify the worksheet before the range. This will ensure the range is referring to the correct sheet. And the other one is that I would remove the variant array as it's not necessary. So in conclusion, we got some pretty good VBA code from ChatGBT. However, before we get too excited, there are two important things that I should point out. Firstly, when I asked this question on an earlier date, I got back completely different code, and this code used collections, and it didn't actually work. So this is something just to keep in mind. And the second thing I should point out, if you're using Office 365, then you can use the unique function with a range or an array. One of the most common questions in VBA is how to get the number of elements in an array. So we use U bound, which is the highest position, L bound, which is the lowest position, and we subtract them from each other and we add one. And this gives us the result. As you can see here, when we go from naught to six, it gives us seven. Now, if we change this from one to five, the result that we get back will be five. So this is how we get the number of elements in an array. So let's try this with chat. GPT. Now when we ask chat GPT this question, what it says to us is that you can use the U-bound function to get the upper bound the number of elements of an array. Now this is actually incorrect, as we have just seen. U-bound doesn't give us the number of elements, it gives us the position of the last element. So now after telling us that U-bound is the number of elements in an array, it's now telling us that we should use U-bound plus one to get the number of elements in an array. It also says here that the lower bound of an array is always zero in VBA, and this is simply not correct, because we can easily set it to one by just saying one to five. The final problem it has here is, it says another way to get the number of elements is to use the count property of the array. Now there's no such thing as the count property of the array in Excel VBA. So this is wrong as well. But here is the funny thing. When I asked this question a day later, and I said how to get the number of values, it actually gave me back the correct answer. So very succinct and absolutely correct. When I ask it the same question again and replace the word values with the word elements, it actually gives me the right answer, but it introduces the array length property, which doesn't actually exist in VBA. So the performance of this task was mixed. We got completely wrong answers the first time, but the second time that I ran it, it gave us the right answer, although there was slightly misleading text. In this example, we're gonna get chat GPT to try and find the error in the code. Now, if we run this code, you'll see that we've got a subscript out of range error. And this is when we try and to assign a value to position six. So we ask chat GPT if it can find the error in the code. Now, when we ask the question, we use shift enter and this pushes it down one line so that we can paste our code. And you can see the response. The error in this code is that the array is defined with a size of one to five, but the code is attempting to assign a value to the sixth element of the array, which is out of bounds. So this is exactly the problem with our code. So this is quite impressive. 
Now let's ask if we can fix the error in this code. And so it tells us here is one possible way to fix the code because there isn't necessarily a perfect fix for the code unless we know the exact context that the code is written in. But here it tells us that we should have values 5 instead of value 6. And what it's also telling us is that if we use a for loop, we can avoid this error because we won't go out of bounds. Now, one thing I'd say is with this for loop, it says 1 to 5, and this really should be L bound to U bound. And then this would really prevent us going outside of bounds. But still, it's helpful enough. Now we're going to get the AI to generate some sample customer data. So often when we're playing around with VBA, it's useful to have some sample data to test out our code. So we're going to get the AI to do this for us. Now here you can see that it's given us what we require, but what's really useful is that it actually puts it into a table. So I thought originally it would just generate it as text, but it's actually given it to us in a table. And what this means then is that when we copy this and paste it into Excel, we don't have to worry about it being in the right cell. Now I'm just going to paste it in as normal text just to avoid any extra formatting. And then we'll just resize the columns and then press Control T and that will allow us to add a table. So we click OK and there we have all the data in our table. I'm going to give chat GPT a thumbs up for this one. Even though it is simple, it is also very useful. This time we're going to give an advanced task to chat GPT and see how it gets on. Now if you look at the range of data here from A2 to C10, what we've got is a list of names and an associated volume and amount. And what we want is a totals report that provides a total for each of these names. Now this is a little tricky to do in VBA because we have two columns to sum. So this often catches people out. So let's ask GPT to give us the code for this and we'll see how it does. Here is a question I've asked ChatGPT, and you can see below that it's generated the code. Now below the code, it gives an explanation of what it did, and this could be quite useful if you're not quite clear on how the code works. So let's copy this code into our Visual Basic Editor and see how useful it actually is. So this is the code here. Now if we do a debug compile to find any errors, what you see is that it has one compiler but this error is actually quite simple. It's just missing the declaration of the variable i. So we'll just add that in here, and then we'll go and run the code. And what you can see on our spreadsheet is that it's created the exact result that we wanted. Now, while this seems impressive, this was actually my third attempt to get code to perform this task. The first two sets of code that I got just were not usable at all and the code didn't work. Now the second thing is that this code itself, while it works, it isn't that flexible. For example, here we see that it's using a dictionary for each column. And the problem with this is that if we have 20 columns, we need 20 dictionaries. So this is very inefficient. You can also see down here that it's writing each item out to the worksheet individually, which is very slow and it should do so in one go. If you want to see how to perform this task the correct way, then check out my video on arrays, collections and dictionaries and start at a 20 second minute. So this was one of my favorite uses of chat GPT. Here we have a collection and the collection VBA is very simple and there's not really much that we can do with it functionality wise. So imagine that we want to add a reverse function. So we want to create our own wrapper class for the collection. So this is a bit more advanced than what we've done before. So now what would happen is we would run our collection and it would actually reverse the items and print them to the immediate window. So let's ask ChatGPT to create the code for our new class. So we ask for a new class module wrapper class for the collection with the reverse function. We click the submit button and let's see what we get. So you can see the code here, it's declared a collection in our class as a private member and now it's creating the add sub and it's creating the reverse function. So this is the new function and it's writing the code for this. And then for item, it's creating it as a get property and count also as a property and just passing on these functions from the original collection. And it also gives us some code that we can play around with if we want, although we have our own code, so we don't need to do it. So to add this to VBA, what we do is we copy the codes, so we click on copy code 
Then we go to the VBA editor and then we select insert class module. And in the class module, we simply just paste that code. We rename the class to CLS my collection, and this is what we'll use in our main code when we're referring to the class. So let's return to our original code. And what we'll do is we'll change the type from the collection to our new class module. And now when we run the code, if all has gone well, it should all actually work and we should get the reverse in the immediate window. So we run the code with no errors and you can see that it printed out the items in reverse. So I think you'll agree that this is a pretty impressive demonstration by ChatGPT. While ChatGPT is capable of generating VBA code, it is not always a reliable solution. Many times a code generated by ChatGPT may have invalid syntax or may not be fit for the intended purpose. And even when it does work, the code may not be optimal and could lead to problems down the road. On the plus side, ChatGPT sometimes produces pretty good code and even if it's not perfect, it can be a great starting point. What I have found useful is if you don't like the answer, is to reword the question and to try again. It is worth noting that ChatGPT is not a shortcut for learning VBA. It is still vital to learn the language properly and then you can take advantage of what ChatGPT offers. If you're interested in creating VBA applications, consider checking out my Excel VBA handbook course, which teaches how to create VBA applications by building nine projects from scratch. This will give you a solid foundation to work with and help you create reliable and efficient code. The link for the handbook and the link to the code in this video are available in the description below. And make sure to let me know in the comments what your experience of chat GPT has been. If you'd like to improve your current VBA skills, then check out my video on arrays, collections and dictionaries. It covers the core parts of using VBA when dealing with data.